If you need to watch any guide to become better in Mobile Legends, it's this one. If you're able to use the right items at the right time, <laughs> I can guarantee to you that your win rate will be increased by at least 10%. Hello my friends! Before we start to talk about the items, I would love to know what is your biggest problem regarding items, so I can take your struggles into account for another item guide. First, you need to know 4 basic rules regarding them. Number 1. The attack speed is limited at 300%, so even if you're only buying attack speed items, it will always remain at 300%. Using Inspire lets your attack speed go up to 500%, but only for a short amount of time. And only because of this, you shouldn't try to build more attack speed items than necessary. Number 2. The default cooldown reduction limit is 40%. So buying items or using emblems to reduce your CD reduction further than 40% is wasted gold. Theoretically, you could get Enchanted Talisman, because its passive can raise your maximum CD reduction to 45%. But this you should only consider when you are playing a magic damage hero, since it's a magic item. Number 3. When you sell your equipment, you get 100% of your gold back when selling it in the first 15 seconds of the game. So if you accidentally bought the wrong item, you can still sell it quickly and buy another item right away. After 15 seconds passes though, you only get 70% of the original price back, while selling boots only gives you 20%. Unless you already have a full build, selling your equipment is a waste of gold. That's why make sure to prepare your build before the match starts and make sure to buy the right items at the right time. And lastly, rule number 4. Redownloading Mobile Legends right now with Aptoid, so you can get more diamonds for your money. The step-by-step -step guide is in the description box below. That's all for the basic rules. And I hope you have taken notes. This will be all part of tomorrow's exam, as well as all of the effects of all physical items. We start with Sea Halberd. It gives you plus 80 physical attack and plus 25% attack speed. But I believe that you are able to read, so I am not reading all the stats of every item and bore you to death with it. The effect of its unique passive is, upon dealing damage to the target, you reduce the shield and HP regen of that target by 50% for 3 seconds. Let me demonstrate it to you and say hi to our test lab buddies, Ali and Joehead. Be nice to them, especially Ali. She's a bit shy. I really need to make a cosplay of this skin together with my daughter. Anyway, as you can see, as soon as I attack the bot Layla, she ain't gonna have a fun time today, the broken heart symbol appears. So if she could use any healing effects, or another hero like Estes is applying a healing effect on her, it's now reduced by 50%. After 3 seconds of not hitting her, it disappears. Important note, unique passives can't be stacked. For example, building two sea halberds doesn't reduce the enemy's regen effect to 0%, so it only makes sense in very few cases to buy the same item twice. This item is best equipped by heroes who benefit from attack speed. So DPS marksmen like Layla, Moskov or 1-1, or DPS fighters like Argus or Zilong. This item should not be part of your regular build though, since the passive only helps you when the enemy actually has heroes with regen effects. For example Esmeralda, Estes or Uranus. The heal effect on the enemy can't be stacked by the way. So if two heroes on your team have an anti-heal item, the regen effect is still only reduced by 50%. So usually it makes sense that only the Roma and one other hero in the team gets an anti-heal item. The other two anti-heal items are Necklace of Durant for mages and Dominance Eyes for sustained fighters and tanks. Item number 2 is Rose Gold Mail. Fail. Rose Gold Meteor. When your HP is about to drop below 30%, you gain a shield with 510 to 1350 points and you get 25 magic defense for 3 seconds. The amount of shield scales with your level and this effect has a cooldown of 40 seconds. It's best equipped by DPS heroes to avoid getting shot to the moon by magic burst damage heroes. Fighters that often initiate a teamfight actually works very well with this item. As the bonus physical attack also comes with a small amount of magic defense and an emergency shield. Since most DPS heroes are weak to CC effects, this shield will save your butt many many times. Marksmen also benefit from it for the same reason, although the popularity of this item is quite low. It's not a completely useless item, but it just gets overshadowed by other defensive items. 
like Immortality, Athena Shield or Radiant Armor. My advice for you would be, just test out for yourself how much you like this item, because you have to play with your build. And you may like different effects on your hero than other players. That's why there's also not a perfect build for every hero, because the playstyle and preferences of each player is different, even when they use the same hero. And that's why it's so important to know how each item in the game works, so you can create the build that perfectly fits you and your playstyle. Item number 3 is Bloodlust Axe. You gain 20% Spellvamp from it. If you don't know what Spellvamp does, when you inflict damage to an enemy with a skill, you regen 20% of the damage you dealt. Any other form of damage doesn't trigger Spellvamp. One important note, unique attributes also can't be stacked. So if you buy Bloodlust X twice, you still only have 20% Spellvamp. This item is best equipped by fighters or assassins that rely on skills to increase their durability when dealing high damage. You can trigger spell vamp using any skill. It doesn't matter if you deal physical, magic or true damage. But to be honest, only a few people has been spotted using this item. Because spell vamp is easily countered by anti-heal items. Moonton also nerfed a lot of spell vamp effects from heroes, like Lancelot's second skill or Saber's first skill. So many players rather use War Axe or Hunter Strike, which also give them a 10% cooldown reduction and provides better stats for physical attack and physical penetration. Item number 4 is Hunter Strike. It has a unique attribute, which gives you plus 15 physical penetration. One important note regarding penetration... <laughs> I see you there laughing in the corner, you dirty bastard. Physical and magic penetration means that you ignore a certain amount of the enemy's defense. If an enemy has 100 physical defense, it gets reduced to 85 for your attacks when you have this item, which means you deal more damage. The effect of its unique passive is, if you deal damage to an enemy hero or creep 5 times in a row, it increases your movement speed by 50% that decays rapidly over 3 seconds. This effect has a cooldown of 8 seconds. It doesn't matter if you hit multiple enemies by the way, as long as you hit at least one of them 5 times. This item got the best unique passive when it comes to ganking. You can easily chase down a lot of retreating enemies by using its passive. It's intended to be used by physical assassins who need to deal more damage and to increase their mobility. It doesn't mean though that other roles can't use it. You can use it with any hero who needs some more mobility and who can easily hit one enemy 5 times. For example Granger, Nathan, Badang, Lapu Lapu or the Roth. Item number 5 is Blade of Despair, which gives you plus 160 physical attack. That's a big boy number worth mentioning and plus 5% movement speed. The effect of its unique passive is, when you're attacking an enemy unit while their HP is below 50%, your physical attack is increased by 25%, which lasts for 2 seconds. This is the most crazy expensive item in the game, which is not surprising, since it also has the highest physical attack bonus. It's best equipped by physical damage heroes to greatly increase their physical attack attributes in the late game. It works best with heroes like Saber, Brody or Hayabusa with their extra physical attack damage scaling or heroes with a high total physical attack bonus on their skills. To explain the difference between those two quickly, extra physical attack only includes the bonus physical attack that you receive from items, emblems or any other effect. It does not include the base physical attack your hero has by default, which the total physical attack bonus does. Usually, the extra physical attack bonus is very high though. For example, Saber's ult deals 2 times 100% and 1 times 200% extra physical attack damage. Which means, if you have 400 extra physical attack, his ult will deal 1600 damage more. So always check the bonus percentage that your hero gets from physical attack. The higher it is, the more sense it makes to build Blade of Despair. Item number 6 is Blade of the Hepta Seas. If no damage is dealt to or taken from any enemy hero within 5 seconds, the next basic attack deals 160 damage plus 40 physical attack as extra physical damage and slows the target by 40% for 1.5 seconds. This item is usually used as an early game item. The bonus damage, the small penetration effect and the slow effect increases your chances of a successful gank. But the downside of this item is that they are just better items for the late game. For example, if you are looking for a physical penetration effect, Malefic Rogers helps you out much more. We will talk about this item later of course. So a lot of people tend to sell it for another item 
Once the item slot is full, it's best equipped by physical assassins that deal the damage with skills so they don't need attack speed items and that need to increase their CC abilities. So for example Natalia, Helkurt, Saber or Benedetta, but also fighters like Jawhead or Cho. As item number 7 we have Scarlet Phantom. Crit hits increase your hero's attack speed by 30% and your crit chance by 5%. This lasts for 2 seconds. And this effect has no cooldown. So if you hit an enemy multiple times with crit hits, the effect's duration is always set back to 2 seconds. This is one out of 3 items that helps your hero to deal critical damage. It also gives you extra attack speed to shred your enemy's HP even faster. It's best equipped by marksmen who deal their damage by basic attacks and therefore rely on critical chance and attack speed. For example Moskov, Bruno and of course the 4 marksmen of doom. But it can be also used by DPS fighters like Zilong or Argus. Item number 8 is Windtalker. Every 5 to 3 seconds, the next basic attack deals 150 to 362 magic damage to up to 3 enemies. This effect can hit critical strikes and deals 200% damage against minions. The cooldown decreases when your attack speed increases. Also, each time a Typhoon is cast, your movement speed will be increased by 5% for a short amount of time. This item is usually built together with Scarlet Phantom, since the same type of heroes benefit from it. It has a movement speed boost, which Scarlet Phantom doesn't have, but gives you a lower critical chance and no extra physical attack at all. So it's more focused on the user's mobility rather than pure firepower. Other roles can also benefit from its base stats alone though. For example, Ling with his latest revamp passive. Every critical chance he gains from equipment will be doubled. So this item gives him 20% critical chance for a very cheap price. And therefore it's being used as the first core item for him by many players. Item number 9 is Endless Battle. This one gives you a lot of bonus stats, so make sure to read them. In 3 seconds after using a skill, your next basic attack will deal additional true damage as much as 60% of your physical attack. This has a cooldown of 1.5 seconds. When this passive is triggered, your hero's movement speed will be also increased by 10%. In case you don't know, true damage ignores all defensive stats of an enemy, which is why this effect is so useful, especially against enemies with high defenses. It's best equipped by heroes that add basic attacks in between of each skill they use. For example Clint, Freya, Ruby, Bane, Carry, or Lancelot. When you build this item you really have to remember that you always try to use a basic attack after you have used a skill. Otherwise you waste thousands of points of true damage which makes this item basically useless. Item number 10 is Berserker's Fury. The passive from this item is not as interesting since crit hits will increase the hero's physical attack by 5% for 2 seconds which is not as great. The stats are what's important for this item. You get plus 65 physical attack plus 25% crit chance and plus 40% crit damage from the unique attribute. Again remember, unique attributes can't be stacked. This item helps you to deal more often crit damage and also increases this crit damage. After Moonton reduced the price of this item, this is probably the best item for DPS heroes. With a unique attribute that deals extra critical damage, this is a crucial item for most marksmen, some DPS fighters like Aulus or Zilong and assassins like Ling also work very well with this item. Consider buying Berserker's Fury as the first or second core item for your heroes, because it helps a lot to increase your damage in the early teamfights. Item number 11 is Harsh Claws. It has an important unique attribute, which gives you plus 25% physical lifesteal and the passive lets you receive 15% more physical lifesteal when your hero's HP drops below 50%. As we all remember at this point, physical lifesteal only triggers when you attack an enemy with basic attacks. Physical skill damage won't trigger the effect. This item is best equipped by all marksmen that rely on basic attacks to increase their sustainability when dealing huge damage. You could also use it on a hero whose skills can trigger basic attack effects. For example Helcourt or Badang. You can also use this item on Ruby since all of her skills benefit from physical lifesteal instead of spell them, while her basic attacks doesn't trigger the lifesteal effect. Item number 12 is Malefic Roar. It has a very special unique attribute which gives you plus 35% physical penetration. You all remember what penetration does? Yes? Great! Its unique passive increases your physical penetration by 0.05% for each point physical defense that your enemy has that you're attacking. This is kept at 
so the maximum physical penetration that you can get is 55%. A little demonstration. On the right side I have Malefic Raw and on the left Legion Sword. Both give me plus 60 physical attack, but Legion Sword give me no penetration effect. With Malefic Raw equipped, I deal 213 damage, while I deal only 150 damage with Little Loop Sword. So in total a difference of 63 damage, which is a huge difference. If you think about the hundreds of attacks that you make throughout the game. If you want, you can also pause now and read the whole math behind physical penetration. Don't we all love math? No? I'm the only one? Alright then. This item is best equipped by heroes who aim to deal a high amount of damage and play against heroes with high physical defense. This passive doesn't work too well against enemies with a low physical defense of course. So the general rule is if one enemy has more than 100 physical defense, you can start to think about building this item. You can always see the stats of the enemies in the stats overview. Item number 13 is War Axe. When you deal damage to an enemy, you get plus 10 physical attack and plus 2 physical penetration per stack. You get one stack every second for 3 seconds and your stacks will disappear if you didn't attack an enemy within this 3 seconds. The max amount of stacks is 8, where you also receive a movement speed bonus of 15%. At full stacks you get a total of plus 80 physical attack and plus 16 physical penetration, which are some really high stats. One important note, marksmen, mage and support heroes only receive one third of those effects. So never use this item with any hero who have this primary role. If they has it as a secondary role, like Yi Sun Chin, whose primary role is assassin, this item works with its full effect on him. It's best equipped by heroes who stay long in a fight and who can deal consistent damage. For example fighters like Arlos, Alufeed, Bane, Roger, Leomord or Belmont. You can also use it on assassins like Saber, Hayabusa or Yi Sun Chin. Just make sure to keep the stacks up in the gank, because otherwise you waste a lot of this item's potential. Item number 14 is Wind of Nature. This skill has an active skill. You become immune to all physical damage for 2 seconds. The cooldown of this skill is 70 seconds and the duration of the effect is half to 1 second when it's being used by a non-marksman. So obviously it's best equipped by marksmen that need to fight against physical assassins or other physical marksmen, especially little ruts like 1-1. One -one. If you have the feeling that you need a defensive item against any of those heroes because they are always up your ass, this is your go-to item, especially when your marksman is attack speed dependent. But please be aware, this only makes you immune to physical damage, not magic damage. So it won't help you against any hero that deals magic damage. Item number 15 is Demon Hunter Sword. Basic attacks deal 9% of the target's current HP as additional physical damage. Against creeps and minions, it deals up to 60 damage. So if an enemy has 10,000 HP, you would deal 900 extra damage. But if the enemy only has 1,000 HP, you would deal only 90 extra damage. So the more HP the enemy has, the more effective this item is. With each basic attack, you also get 3% extra physical lifesteal for 3 seconds, which can be stacked up to 5 times. So 15% physical lifesteal in total. This item is best equipped by heroes who deal their damage with many basic attacks and to counter tanks or other sustained heroes with a high amount of HP. You can already see Hylos and Balleric sweating from afar. Their thick bodies means nothing to Demon Hunter Sword. Claude is probably the hero that benefits the most by using this item. Each of his basic attacks will trigger the passive twice, since the little monkey Dexter also benefit from it. Of course, other DPS heroes can also use it, like Beatrix with Nibiru or any heroes with high attack speed. For example marksmen like Mia or DPS fighters like Sun. This item has two huge weaknesses though. Firstly, if you buy DHS as your first item, you will have a hard time on your lane since the extra damage is based on your enemy's current HP and none of your enemies on your lane has a high HP in the early game, which means your basic attacks will feel like someone is tickling you, while your enemy probably bought a hard hitting crit item first. It also has the problem that it's very difficult to finish an enemy with it. Quick question for you, why is that? <clears throat> of course because you always deal 9% of the enemy's current HP. Although the solution is pretty easy. Just combine Demon Hunter Sword with Blade of Despair since it will compensate the lack of damage in a way. There's another way to use Demon Hunter Sword though and this is when you plan to combine it with item number 16, Golden Staff. This is an item that confuses many players. You're unable to increase your critical chance 
Once you have this item equipped, every 1% of critical chance will be converted into 1% attack speed instead. What kind of BS item is this you may ask yourself now? Well, it has a second unique passive. After every two non-critical basic attacks, the attack speed of your next basic attack is increased by 100% and its effects are triggered an extra two times. Now, let me show you the magic of this item. Carrie usually needs 5 basic attacks to activate her passive, which deals extra 2 damage. With golden stuff though, her third attack will trigger the mark 3 times, so she only needs 3 basic attacks to activate her passive. Combine this with her ultimate and she melts down even tanks like butter. Yes, Layla is a tank. This also works in combination with Demon Hunter Sword. As you can see at my third attack, the extra damage of Demon Hunter Sword's passive got triggered 3 times which is an absolute nightmare for any hero with high HP. So in conclusion, this item is best equipped by heroes whose basic attack have special effects or heroes who use the DHS plus golden stuff combo. For example, Carry, Badang or Claude. Just don't forget that you can't deal any critical hits to your enemies. So avoid getting Windtalker, Scarlet Phantom and Berserker's Fury. Item number 17 is Corrosion Scythe. Each time a basic attack deals damage to an enemy, it reduces the target's movement speed by 8% for 1.5 seconds. And your attack speed is increased by 8% for 3 seconds. This effect can stack up to 5 times, so in total you can both slow the enemy and increase your attack speed by 40%. The slow effect is half for ranged basic attacks though. This item is best equipped by heroes that rely on attack speed and exceal at picking off lone enemies. So for example fighters like Thamus, Sun or Argus or even a marksman like one, one Even with a half slow effect on your enemies, it still helps to chase down the enemies with your jumps. And the bonus attack speed also helps her to jump around faster. And her ultimate also benefits greatly from attack speed. Since it raises the amount of arrows, she lets Ray down on the poor enemies that try to escape. Now before you try to escape from me, check out my guide on how to counter any enemy. See you over there!